How good was the Taylor Walker show? <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed it as, as much as any. It was um, it was a fitting night for him. Um, well, and for the team and for everyone that had come out. I think we had 30, you know, 37,000 here who... A lot of them would have come. They've been with us for so long that they came to celebrate his career to this point. And so, you know, we went into the game... Our, our mindset was, was very much about, you know, continuing our form. We knew we had strong form at home. Um, we talked a lot about Tex and about Sholey during the week and the milestone, and then we moved on come the last 48 hours. There wasn't a lot of, you know, that talked about, but for it to finish the way it did... And, you know, for him to kick 10 in his 250th, <laughs> it's a fairy tale. It's a, it was a fantastic night for, for the club and for Tex and for his family and, and for all our supporters who have been there the whole journey. Um, so I enjoyed it as much as any. Fair to say the players saw that opportunity to load him up. Did you give him that free hand? Or? No, we didn't. As I said, we didn't discuss loading him up. We didn't play that way. We we played our our regular way. He did. You know, he's often, he's often on the end of a lot of the guys' good work. He's, and I, I mean that with respect. Tex kicks some goals where, where we smile in the box in amazement at times. He did that a couple of times tonight. I thought, he, I thought his tenth was going to be one of those, and it just slid away to the points. Um, so which one of the ten did you like the most? Oh, there wasn't a special one at all. Oh, probably the, the tenth one. At least that meant he, we didn't go searching for it. Um, but I thought we, yeah, I thought as a group we just played the footy we've been playing. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, he's he's part of that footy. He's a really important part, and he's one of the best finishers in the comp, both sides of his body, and he showed that again tonight. But but the team effort to give him those opportunities was was spot on. Sorry, I, I missed. Uh, been a little bit nervous, I'd probably say. A little, little bit edgy. And, you know, talking to him, even tonight, he was a bit edgy. He mentioned it post-game. He didn't show it. Um, there's a lot that goes on with a milestone. There's, you know, a 250th especially. There's a fair bit of support. And we go back in time. We look at a lot of the history, a lot of his, you know, the support that he's had from Broken Hill. You know, we get to meet though the family and friends from, from back there early in the week. And slowly we shape our way to, towards footy. So it's a big week, um, but you know he's he's been around footy for long enough to know when it's time to switch on, and he did that tonight. Just regarding the game, Matthew, I know obviously the Eagles are severely depleted, but the ruthlessness, I guess, you guys keep your foot to the floor. That must have been thrilling for the coach to watch. R really pleasing um, because we did it for four quarters. We we were really consistent. We didn't give an inch. You know, we didn't give them an opportunity to build momentum to come back into the game. At, at quarter time, as you guys know, we've you know we've let 30 point leads slip this year three times. So at quarter time there's still some nerves, there's, you know, but at, at the same time there's a lot of trust in that we continue to learn and develop week by week. But for us to do it, you know, for four quarters, I'm not sure what exact scores were in each quarter, but we <coughs> we just stuck strong to what we we knew win, wins games for us. Um, in the end, we kicked 27 goals, or thereabouts, um, with a mindset that wasn't about necessarily coming in to kick 27 goals. So really pleasing. Can you talk about percentage at all when you're up on it during the game? Be careful what I want to share with you, with everyone. We're, we're a very open group. We're a very open coaching group. We. Um, we had a conversation at halftime where you know, teams that find themselves up the way we were at halftime of, often drop away in the second half. <clears throat> and so we had a conversation about that at the break, which was a risk. And I mentioned it being a risk to the playing group. I said, this is risky of me, but I'd, I'd rather us talk about it now than after the fourth quarter. And that was just about us sticking to what we'd done up until that point because percentage is really important. Like we are seven and six now coming into the break. Um, we are right in the fight, and the fight's um, got a lot of teams in it. So 
if we continue to play the footy that we know we can, then percentage is going to be really important come the end of the year. Um, we're where I thought we'd be from our development point of view. Not, not necessarily on the ladder. I don't really think about that. Um, it's all about how we're playing footy, the style we're bringing, the, the contests that we bring. Um, we've, we've still got so much more improvement in us. We, we look at the second half of the year and you know, how do we continue to get better? Well, we know we can be better away from home. But, so there's upside. There's still more upside. We love playing here in front of our fans, and they're huge. They're huge for us. It's, it's such a lift for our young group. Um, but we, we can be better on the road. And we start, um, we start our second half of the year against Collingwood at the MCG, so this, there's no bigger challenge. But I know our guys will be you know, really looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, I think like I'd say probably most teams you get to this point and the, and the physical break is the big one. Um, you know, you mentioned Max, he's done a fantastic job as a first year player to continue to perform the way he has. But yeah, we've got some guys that will really benefit from this break that we were coming in. We Tonight we subbed Murray out probably earlier than we have used our sub most weeks, you know, without it being an injury or, or a concussion. And brought McHenry in, we, we knew Ned was ready to go. And that was really around Murray and the work he's done up to this point. It had nothing to do with form in the game, it was more about a long-term view. Um, there were others we, we probably would have liked to have done it with as well, but um, we were also mindful of you know, keeping our, our foot down and, and wanting the result in the end. We take, uh, well, we take a number of days off from from tonight, we, we'll celebrate as a group tonight with with Tex and his family and Sholly and his family, um, and then we'll take three or four days where the guys, you know, have some some time away from the club and sharpen the saw, as we call it, uh, and then we come back train. I think it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday of next week. Um, give them the weekend off after the Saturday, and, and then we're back into it and preparing for Collingwood. That's a very good question, Rich, and we're working our way through it. There, there are, I mean, I mean, our road trips have been challenging. There's, we're not going to hide, hide from that. There's, we've gone to Ballarat, we've gone to Darwin, we spent the only, but we've been everywhere. Um, you're away from home, you're on buses, you're on planes, you're eating smorgasbords at a hotel. You, you know, so we've discussed a lot of that. And when you're a young group, a smorgasbord looks really good pre-game, but you don't normally have three meals before a when you're at home. And we, we'll continue to work through that. But but there is a lot of it that where you, you draw energy from the support we receive at home. That's the majority of it. You, you draw energy from your, from your crowd. Um, everyone's influenced on a game day, both teams and umpires. You know, there's a lot of little things that add up. Uh, and there can, you know, we haven't been blown away necessarily away from home. Last weekend, we, we were right in that game and had our opportunities and at crucial moments, you know, we got some stuff wrong. Um, they're little things that we've just got to improve on, a lot of little things, you know. Uh, and we'll get that from experience, hopefully in the second half of the year. Is it more about growth rather than a mental issue? Growth of yeah, you just grow. Yeah, there's no, there's no mental issue, I, you know, not that we can see. It's Our, our players, you know, they, they come out with the same sort of um, mindset into those games. And, we showed that last week. We, you know, we jumped out the blocks and we're ready to go. But we're just dropping a few little areas at times, and a lot of different little areas away from home for, for whatever reason that we'll keep, you know, trying to iron out. Are you, are you looking forward to playing the final as well? <laughs> yeah, I think round. Yeah, next round's the first one for the year. Yeah, we are. I mean, Melbourne's a trip that that a lot of the guys have done. Even the younger guys have, have done the Melbourne trip. It's a shorter trip, and and playing on the MCGs. You know, always a thrill. We don't get a lot of games on there. I think it's two this year before you get a chance even to look at finals footy. Uh, we get Collingwood and Melbourne, I believe, on the MCG. So 
Now the guys will really look, look forward to that, but the, at the moment their focus is on this break. muddy the waters more or muddy the waters yeah we, we didn't go through the memo with our playing group um, obviously we look at a lot of the memos we look at a lot of the a lot of the game and where some of the challenges come in um, I, I think there's all, everything we're doing in the game at the moment from a from an AFL point of view is has all good intentions you know we're, we're trying to we're trying to protect the players it's all about player welfare so we we are 100 percent in on all of that it's just a real challenge at this point um, because the game's so much faster than than what it is when you slow it down and look at it in slow motion. Um, so we'll continue to work with them on that. It's it's a really tough one. Um, do, we but have, do we have an extra problem there? Where you remember when the head eye tackle led to players burrowing their heads, and then that became a problem. Then we had to change the rule again. Is the flopping during tackles now the problem? Because you know you can guarantee yourself. I don't want to be that coach that is controversial. But you see. So I'm better off not answering it, Bruce. Otherwise, we just, I just get myself into a, a conversation that I don't need to be in. But we've all got two eyes. Yeah. 